Jora chieftaincy title dates back to the early settlement of Lagos. The first Ojora of Lagos, Alara Orujin, was one of the children of Olofi who settled at Ido. Olofi was said to have shared the surrounding settlement among his sons, which he administered through a confederal system of government. <laughs> Since then, the Ojora chieftaincy title with the white cap status has become established as a major component of Lagos traditional institution. As one of the longest existing chieftaincy lineage, 18 Ojora have reigned in Lagos, the last of whom was Chief Fatai Aremu Oyeyinka Aromire, now is Royal Majesty. Oba Fatai Aremu Oyeyinka Aromire Oyegbemi the second, or Jora of Ijora and Igomu Kingdom. Oye to je ije pe ko toro eje Oye le baba e ni Ikiri nbe emi ti ba ni soro yi emi omo bakare faro ojora kere mercy ni baba ti emi to bi emi aja yi ojora ta wa ti emi o bo mu jumo aja yi mo mo baba to bi mi kere mercy na ba mi de ni mo gbo ju mo dada bakare faro leyin e ajibola o je ba ti ti orugbode ku to bo soro le fa kere mercy lo de sori leyin kere mercy ta ru ila na ka po o je kere mercy lo de ojo ra wa ile ni fatai ori ti e ni a de ti wolu jo ra yi ori ti e after the demise of the last chief, uh, Babaudan, which is properly called Babaudan, that's what we call him. Uh, naturally, if there's efficiency like that, a lot of people will fight for the position. We have some people who are like uh, brother, Mr. Aki or me, of Blessed Momori. Uh, more or less in the forefront of becoming the chief of Ojora. So luckily for him, you cannot decide who will become a chief or a king. But naturally, 
becoming a king or a chief is not a thing that can be done in, in a jiffy. Some people will be preparing for it. That they want to be this and be that, and then they be preparing for that particular position. And there's some people who will be lucky enough that they will not fight for it, they will not struggle for it. But God being in his position, somebody will emerge. I was a lucky somebody, and then some of the family members at that time were really riding him, and then he became the chief. The ascension of Oba Fatai Aremu Oyeyinka Arumire to the position of Chief Ojora on Sunday 5th of June 1994, a white cap chief and a member of the Idejo Chieftaincy class of landowners marked a new dawn in the illustrious history of Ojora Chieftaincy title. With the advantage of his working experience as an officer in the Ojora Royal Family Office for 14 years, Oba Fatai Aremuaromire was not only well prepared for this position, he actually initiated various programs that has catapulted the family to enviable heights. Our Oba started as a chief and lately he became the Oba of Joraland. He's a very nice somebody. He's a philanthropist. He cares for the family and we all love him. On the strength of experience and information at his disposal, Oba Fatai Aremuaro Mire renewed various battles to reclaim what belongs to the family at two critical fronts. The first was the legal fight to regain vast expanse of land of the Ojora family that had been encroached, occupied and unlawfully been sold to people in the Gomu area. The legal case was actually instituted at the Lagos High Court in 1972 with little or no success recorded. Oba Fatai Aromire Aremu assembled a very strong and reliable legal team which successfully pursued the case and obtained victory at the Court of Appeal in Lagos. The legal battle continued at the Supreme Court in Abuja and on Friday 3rd of April 2009, the highest court in Nigeria upheld the judgment of the appeal court which earlier ruled that the entire Ijora and Igomu land belongs to the Ojora family. It was a victory well deserved after 37 years of legal struggle. Can you see? I cannot but use the importance of this occasion to comment on a matter that has become a matter for public discussion. The recent judgment of the Supreme Court as it relates to the land of your family. As I said before, I was part of that journey. But the Supreme Court has vindicated you. And I believe God has vindicated you. But as you exercise the rights over that land, I urge you and members of the family to do so in accordance with the law. There is a time for everything. And of course, finally, Uluwalu Mugule. Those who are tenants of the land should respect the judgment and give you your rights. And I believe that when you work with lawyers and accountants, there will be a proper method for determining what is a fair value, a humane compensation for them to pay to you. I urge you and members of the Odora family to be gracious in victory, to be magnanimous in victory, and to recognize your roles as custodians and leaders of the community. <laughs> Fatai to to di obaleni 
ogoro alifa yi o lo gba judgment da ni to ran to se wa si ohun ta on fi haya ni ohun ta baba temi olugode bakare faro o so body ilu e ki be ran to raje gun le fun yin nigba to olugode ba so ade gun le 1940 lo so aje gun le egbon ya ti e egbon ya ka be si wa yi o lo fi je ba le be lawo ko awon mele bi ba du o n bise ko ni fi je o fi je le ni ko bola nju bola ju o si le ni gbogbo o po lo jora aje gun le la lo olugode lo da le bakare faro olugode to be nba ki tin ba yin soro yi aje gun le aye toro agausa alaba Okay, maybe we already knew when that case was decided some years back. It has been on for a long time. We have about two or three ships who have been pursuing this case. Um, some people will feel perhaps it's a long time and um, you don't like to continue. But um, but we know every, anything that is good, the struggling and the uh, overwhelming problem is not an easy task. We are happy when it started, but we know it's a very long solution. Involves money, time, and even lately, by the time they move the capital, to, they have to be going to Abuja all the time to fight for this case. And we are happy that at the end of the day, we are all, we are, we are all happy what happened, really happened because we won the case. And um, well over 30 something years, this case has been on. And he's a man who, at the end of the day, he got the judgment. For your family. Baba, why? Oh, only Oche, Ridididi, Amo, Baba, what you say? Nipa or Gomu, once a case, T, 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 or Ring or Jue, Nipa T, Baba, why you did it? Along for she, oh, no, Paris, Gomu, La Jari Vasile, along for Larry. With this judgment, Ijora and Igomu Kingdom now covers almost nine local government areas and has over 46 ballets. Oba Fatai Aremu Aromire sits over these areas and institutions, ensuring peace and progress all across the kingdom. <laughs> The second was the efforts to ensure a befitting status for the Ojora chieftaincy title. Oba Fatai Aremu Arumire again renewed this tussle. Pushing through the rigors and processes of the chieftaincy tribunal set up for that purpose, all the necessary approval and official instruments needed to upgrade the Ojora chieftaincy title to a full-fledged oba was successfully obtained from the government. <laughs> So also the ade in ko yin lani ko se le ri ni ilu yi awala koko to lorun se fun so inu medun fun ore na mo de wa we pe lorun ko jesu ko ni baje consequently chief abdul fatai aremu aromire status as the chief or jora of lagos was upgraded to a first class oba in lagos state he was subsequently installed and crowned as the ojora of ijora and igomu kingdom as the staff of office was presented to him on Saturday, 3rd of March, 2010, by His Excellency, Mr. Babatu Niraji Fashola, the Governor of Lagos State. <laughs>
is a recognized fitness title under the provisions of Part 2 of the Organized Achieves Law, Part 02 Laws of Labor State of Nigeria 2003, whereas the Nigeria community requested for the resuscitation of its own status, whereas the state government referred the request to the standing tribunal of inquiry for investigation and report. Whereas the state government has accepted the recommendation of the tribunal for the resuscitation of the title of the order of Ijara and the elevation of its incumbent. Now, therefore, I, Mr. Babatunde Raju Pasola, SM, the executive body of the state, in the exercise of powers conferred and we under section 22 I of the order and chief law, and by virtue of all other powers and making me that they have, hereby approve the appointment of Abdul Fatai Oyei Kara Kanani Arubere as the other Ijora of Ijora in the Akama Like this, we, we have as an individual. That's what we say. All the dangers are the landowners. And then um, all of them want to aspire to be the Oba of, of their kingdom at any given time. And then um, we, we first started with the, I think Elegushi was the first one. Then um, Oniruchu came in. We have the Oloto who came in basically. And then our Oba of late, about two or three years ago, when he was in the Oba of uh, Ajara Kingdom. Everybody will be happy from ship to Oba. It's not an easy task. You go to tribunal, a lot of things happen. And then when the states eventually give us the green light that um, we have been given that position, we are all, all the family. If you see that day, you see what really happened. All the sons and daughters of Oja, we are all there. And we are happy because I have made a history for that position. So we thank God. In spite of the two seemingly huge challenges of pushing through the legal battles for the recovery of Ojora land and the upgrading of the status of the Ojora title, Chief Fatai Are Muaromire did not lose focus of the need to pursue and attract developmental projects to Ijora and the Ikodmu kingdoms. In the last 20 years, the kingdom has witnessed considerable infrastructural transformation which cuts across social and economic sectors. We know how Ijora was at that time. But if you could look at the development in Nigeria today and in Gomu, it has brought in a lot of achievement, a lot of development. Ijora Road, Ijora Oloye Road has been tied, Odofin Street, Adejinyo Street in Ijora. If you look at uh, Lawala Kapo Street in Ijora, Ijora Oloye Primary School has been redeveloped, giving us a new development now. Then let us move to Apa Gomu. LCDA. Apa Gomu LCDA, if you look at the school in Gaskia College, which is under my control now, the government has given us a millennial school in Gaskia College. If you go down to Eroti Primary School, you will see a millennial school there. And in the area, there are a lot of rules that have been tied now under its regime. If you see Gaskia College Road, if you see Cemetery Road now, which is Amoko, right from Ranabad till Alaba now, you will not feel any ghost low. It has been tied during its regime. And a lot of health centers, hospitals, has been developed. APA General Hospital has been developed. Now in my own community, which is Olojong Okioja, they've given us a standard 24-7 primary health center now. Sari Gom also has a 24-7 primary health center, which they've developed, and they have qualified doctors and qualified nurses there. Now, 
The government himself had more interest to our community. Immediately he becomes sober. Get to our new express now. It's not 12 lanes. As a matter of it, it's first in Africa. So, we, presently we are having a, a Coca Stadium, Coca Mini Stadium, which at least within our community is a part to us, is a part to all the youths. So, get into the school. Look at Jubilee. Look at Coca Pamayo School. We have as small as we can point to. And even the House of our representative today, they had more to develop because the interest of Oba was being carried by all of them. So even look at Kokar or really Gomu Road now. Before you can move from that place, it's, it can take you a long time. But today it's now an express. Move from here, Kokar to Orile, you can see what is happening. You can see development. You see new model buildings between left and right of it. So it's a, it's a thing we can part of and we thank God for giving us that type of Leadership. His coming in is a, more or less God's gift because he came in at the very time that he championed the cause of development in the whole of the Kingdom. It's a lot of improvements. Talk of schools, building of new central mosque, donation of gifts. Awarding of scholarships and so many other things I mentioned. Just like his predecessor, who used, I mean, my uncle, who used to be the Ojora of Lagos, relates with people in government fighting for their community. Okay, we need this, we need that, we need that. He never really allowed us to rest until we were able to do a lot of roots for him, I mean, for the community. And we actually had to open up um, Ijora create more roads that will lead into Ijora. Before now, just two roads leads into Ijora, in and out of Ijora. But um, we've been able to give them an additional road. He believes in the development of his domain, and he has been working with the local government and the state government in carrying out this. And that's the reason why you have a lot of um, developmental projects within his area. So he wouldn't mind uh, sacrificing his personal benefits for the community. There are people, they expect what they actually got from uh, close to six years in government and they've been, you know, very grateful to this administration and we won't rest until we do more. Presently now we're constructing an artificial football field, um, grass for them in Nigeria. And that is one of, you know, um, their major focus. They love football so much in Nigeria. So and they don't really have anywhere where they play football. So we, as a local government, we're actually constructing a football field with artificial turf for them, which will be completing before the end of this senior. <laughs> There is a lot of development in Nigeria now. Let's say this goes. Um, water, most especially road on some various um, area. Then, and let's talk about the family too. Some the jobless people started giving job. You know, since he has become urban now, he has right.
to say, uh, we, my community need this, my community need that. So those are the development coming after he became the over. His Royal Majesty has been using his position to attract government and corporate interventions in the provision of health, education, housing and road projects in the kingdom. He has also been able to attract industrial development to Ijora land. Our government continues to work to be mindful of the urgent need for redevelopment of the road under the Ijora Causeway and work is at quite an advanced stage that we are able to come there to give relief to that road. Personally, Oba Fatai Are Muarumire spearheaded the completion and the commissioning of the Ijora Uluye Central Mosque on Friday 28th of December 2012. The mosque is part of the projects implemented to encourage religious harmony and ensure the peace and progress of Ijora through prayers said there. <laughs> foundation Again, His Royal Majesty has expended great resources to support different projects in his domain. He donated building materials, generators and mats, including various sums of money for the development of mosques and churches in his kingdom. As a compliment, Oba Fatai Aremu Arumire has ensured a regular celebration of the Elegba festival. Elegba Ejiwa is a deity inherited from Olofi and worshipped by all Idejo chiefs. It is synonymous with peace, harmony and good health. Here, the Elegba is celebrated with the Ijora festival, which also stands as the grand finale. Our family... Uh, heritage and uh, cultural design, especially the Jiwa, the Elegbas. It is the time everybody comes around. Um, it's serving this program, and we all are happy. We do it, fun, fear, drink, enjoy ourselves. We have we, we pay homage to our great great forefathers. It is uh, the belief, and uh, we believe at that time peace will reign in that kingdom. As a former footballer and table tennis player, Oba Fatai Arumire has strong interest in football and as such, he frequently sponsors and supports grassroots sports competitions such as the Oba Ojora Soccer Competition. The advantage of this initiative is that the youths are productively engaged and the rate of insecurity in the kingdom is drastically reduced. <laughs> About as proof of his good heart, Oba Fatai Are Muarumire also donates various kinds of food items to the motherless babies 
and the old people's home every year. Through this, Kabiesi continues to identify with these groups as he makes sure that no one is left out in the kingdom. At least I have witnessed nothing less than two or three times in occasion that he will donate many things to many people. He's hosting a football club, hosting many type of what can make youth happy within the community. He donate many things to particularly we ships. There are many, many of us is being given car. So it's a person that nobody will cry to him that will not laugh on his way out. Obagidi, so Lord, to me, to repay me, Sumana, you pay, King and Sinker, came in his 20 eventful years on the throne of his forefathers, Oba Fatai Aremu Aromire has fostered unity and peaceful coexistence amongst the Ojora chieftaincy family and among the people of Ijora and Igomu kingdom. At great personal sacrifices, he has ensured that all hands are on deck in order to take the kingdom to greater heights. Born on 1st of January 1953 to late Pa Jimo Oladipo and Madame Wilimot Adbeke Aromire, Oba Abdul Fatai Oyeyinka Olashile Aremu Aromire attended St. Theresa's Primary School in Napapa, Lagos from 1958 to 1964, he was then admitted into the Lagos Secondary Commercial Academy, Laska, now Ilukweju College, and was there between 1964 and 1969 for his post-primary education. While in school, Kabiesi was a great football player and a sports enthusiast. On completion of secondary school education, he joined the prison department of the Federal Ministry of Internal Affairs now the Nigerian Prison Service, in 1969 and worked there for 10 years. He left the service to work in the Ojora Royal Family Office from 1980 to 1994. The same year, precisely on 5th of June, he was chosen by the Oracle as the 18th Ojora of Lagos. He thus became a white cap chief and a member of the Idejo Chieftaincy class. He remained in this position until year 2010 when he became a full-fledged Oba. My predecessors died in 1993. So, it's the turn of my 
Kurira family to present a candidate for the stool then. So we, the head of our family then was Oba Kasali Ashini, the only tier of a tree, then was the head of Oyibemi ruling house. A letter was written to him by the head of Ojoa Ruya family then, that's Prince Lassisia Ajay Ojoa, is the head of Ojoa Ruya family then. So he wrote a letter to Oba Kasali Ashini, who is the head of Oyibemi branch of Ojoa family. And Oba Kashali Ashini then called the whole family to a meeting in the Jura year. That he has received a letter from the head of Ojura Ruya family that we should present the candidate for the stool. So in that call the family then, and nobody besides Lidan can say when the last Oyibemi became. The order of Lagos then. Nobody can say the years. So we now put it in the vote that let us do it like this. Let the all the ruling houses in Oyebemi present a candidate. So all the branches of Oyebemi present a candidate that everybody should write a letter who's interested. Actually, for God, I don't have interest because I'm supporting someone. When, I, when everybody wrote that letter and sent it to the Obaoni Tire, now called the old family meeting again and said, now he doesn't want to pick anybody by himself, that he have to use a Faurako, that rational way to pick the candidate. So he now fixed a date in his palace at the Tire that everybody should present. Be there. So every one of us went there. So we are seven number. The first person who might even supporting lost. The second person lost. The third person, the father could pick him. That's I like that. I like the Sikiru Onikolo. When the father could pick him, as a plain person, the other said, because I like the Sikiru Onikolo comes from his own ruling house, he doesn't want him. That would be that maybe it's partial. So he was dropped. Another person, one Oyadino, the father picked him too. That is good. So right now, now came out openly that he's a Catholic. So he didn't want to become an Ojora because anybody, anybody who become Ojora will be a traditionalist. So he doesn't want to be a traditionalist. It's better he stay at his church. So he now came to my own senior brother's stone. So when the father like said, my brother doesn't fit to be the Ojora. Everybody is tired. Myself, because I don't have interest. When they try all the other member of the family, the, when the father didn't pick them. Right? The father could now ask them that what of this gentleman sitting down? Is he a member of this family? The other said yes. Let him try his luck. The father could now say, I the father please now say, I should step out. And I step out. And I give me the cowry. Give, give me the cowry. And I say, I even, before God, I don't tell us, I don't even say anything. Because I'm not interested, because I'm supporting someone. When I put, when I heard the cowry like this, I just say, they said, I should throw it. I don't, it. I don't see that the father please just stand up and say, Cabbage, you. KBSU, KBSU. I feel surprised. What's wrong? He said, not turn to Obani said that this is a GOB. So everybody started looking at each other. What's wrong? What's wrong? Because I'm the youngest. 
Mais c'est ça. Le problème, c'est que je suis pas heureux parce que j'ai un candidat que je supporte myself. Je me sens mal pour me faire piquer. Donc, quand je vois que je me suis levé, I saw the face of the person I'm supporting. The other candidates too. Everybody are not happy. They bring my own senior, immediate senior brother. And I, and I told them, I'm the youngest person among you. Let us go to another privacy room of the unit. Let us go and discuss with our own male child. So when we went to that sitting room, and I said, let us go back to each other. You, my brother, who I'm supporting, I'm ready to release this stunt for to you because I'm not interested. I want to travel out. We now, we now agree that the second day, because it, uh, it's going to around 6 30 day before we finish that ceremony. So let's just meet at each other by 10 a.m. the second day. Finally, when we all of us agreed, the contestants, everyone of us agreed. So going back to where our by Therese, Sitting down to go and give him our words. Mm. When I went there, I just said that all my clothes were torn down. I have to run for my life to a, a the police station beside the Obas Palace. It was Elijah Buhari Oloto who saved my life that day. I will be killed. So when I when they went to bring me back to Ijara, with this police van. It was one of the, you know, when in the police station, see, they are on their uh, uniform, uh, they are moved to, uh, they have to give me one of the uh, civilian cloth to wear. So, and I sat down in this police van. So, on my way coming, that's one Yoruba man, is from Oyo, he's a policeman. We sat together inside that van. When he asked me, are you a slave in that house? How are you to that place? I said, I'm a village. I'm from a male child too. My father is, 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 is a male child. Is that a male child? I'm not, I'm not a female child. I'm from a male child. He said, but Michael, it was your forefathers that picked you. Because I narrated everything to him. And I said, don't reject it. Take the, this thing. So that's, that man said to me, just pull me up. Said, ah, it's true now. I'm a male child. Now, I may be a young man, but uh, I have the right to. So I tried to change my mood immediately. When I had that, that man's uh, words. So, reaching Nigeria now, you know, you see, I would have added that it was me that if I or I could put, I know I'm the head of the youth in Nigeria. So, the youth have taken over that they want me. They just pick, pick me up, dancing about in Nigeria. We dance to our Rose Palace. Then I wrote, this is our candidate. That's where the problem starts. So, I was installed on June 5th, 1994. I was taken to court. From my court, I won at the high court. I won at the appeal court. Supreme Court, too. We have settled. About, let's say, about four months ago, we started at Supreme Court. So we are battled it from 1990 for 20 years. Litigation. That's why I become, it's not, it's not an easy road. A great lover of sports, Oba Fatai Oyeyinka Aremu Aromire's humane personality. His humility, openness, and cosmopolitan outlook has earned him the respect, love, and administration of the people whose support he continues to enjoy. Oba Fatai Aremu Aromire is married to Olori Tolani Aborishade Ashabi Aromire, and they are blessed with children and grandchildren. <laughs> Dada to fu wa dada e ka bi esi eyan dada ni ati gba ta ti de bi baba ila ko ba lo leyin o wa kon un to tun se fun wa je lo mu wa gaje bi ya to ba ti e ti gbohun yin bayi tin ba ni ka bi esi tin ba se be ya wa leje
On this occasion of the 20th anniversary of his reign as the Ojora of Lagos and the Oba of Ijora and Igomu Kingdom, we wish Oba Fatai Are Muaromire many more fruitful and progressive years on the throne. Ka BSU, Igba Odun, Odun Konyu. Ka BSU, Ka Dekpe Lori, Ki Bata Akpe Lese. What else did I say? God will be with you. Um, God will give you long life and prosperity. What your ancestors couldn't achieve, you achieve. You've been a groundbreaker already, but God will help you to, you know, um, you enlarge your coast and you'll be able to break more grounds. Can be a you. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I pray for our father of today. For our father of today. He's a young man. He should allow, he should allow, he should allow. Is celebrating 20 years, he will celebrate 60 years together with me. I will not lose him, he will not lose him. Ojora family will continue great more, 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 and more. I thank the governor of Lagos State because he, I'm the first upper that the governor of Lagos State will present staff of office to. And it's an, it's an history. If we are there, the Dome of Coronation, you see the governor himself, the former governor of Lagos State, Ashwabala made the move, the Oba of Lagos himself, in his capacity, was there. It's an, it's an history day. It's a day which everybody in Jerusalem will never forget. So I give thanks to the governor of Lagos State, Ashwabala made the move to Oba of Lagos, the old Lagosians, and my people at Ijora. I say a big thank you to them, because they with every one of us. Any Jordan Babalai, oh my do, oh my do, oh my do, oh my Babalai, oh my do, 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 oh my do,